This was a really interesting chapter, and part of it I was very on board for, but there's also a part of this chapter where I feel like there are things that needed to be addressed, or at least points that needed to be made, that are not made during this conversation, and I kind of felt like one of the villagers of our knee just kind of waiting for his moment to say something, but never gets a chance to. Now, you guys know that Vinland Saga is one of my favorite manga of all time. It's a top five manga for me, and Thorfinn as a character watching his journey has one, been one of the greatest joys of not just reading manga for me, but just storytelling in general, from the very beginning chapters up until now, and everything that he's gone through. And the main thing to take into account when you're having this conversation between whether or not we need defensive weapons or not is that Thorfinn has experienced the darkest aspects of what these things have to offer. He has experienced war firsthand. He has seen what it's done to people, not just in the violence that happens, but the aftermath and the mindset of people that go into war or value war and uh, charge into battle and the things that they leave behind and all of the horrible outcomes that can possibly happen because of that. And we also have to remember our need, which was the turning point for Thorfinn and Enar. It was over her grave that they both decided to team up and try to create this world without war or slavery and try to create a new path and a new way of life for people. And our needs presence is kind of featured all over this chapter, both in the fact that the name of the town is mentioned several times, and also the continuous cutaways to Arnid's statue, sort of watching over and sort of like her spirit observing the entire conversation and a reminder of what would Arnid have wanted within this moment. And I love this little Thorkel cameo that we get in the beginning of the chapter where Cordelia is reflecting on different aspects of her life and how she was born a boy and then, you know, in war and people thought she was useless because she has this huge, massively strong body, but she's not a war monger like her father was. But hey, these things happen in life. Just because you're born with a 12-inch cock doesn't mean that you got to do porn. So sometimes what you're naturally gifted for isn't even something that you want to do. And that's just fine, right? It's to find a place where she feels valued and feels like she belongs and that she can actually kind of be her true self, which she believes would be Vinland. And there's a point of contention with that when things are kind of brought up a little bit later in the chapter. There's a few things I do want to touch on that were mentioned during this conversation. So basically, we have this whole uh, group gathering, which is called a thing, where they are here to sit down and discuss moving forward if we want defensive weapons brought into this new land and civilization that we're brought into. The natives don't seem like they're hostile in any way, but we never know when they might change their minds because we are coming in. This was where they were living. We are slowly cultivating more land, tearing more trees down. You would think that at some point they might have a problem with this. Watching and reading Thorfinn's entire journey, I completely understand where his mind state is at at this point and the fact that he has the history and the experience and the foresight to see what these things could potentially do if we go down this road. Uh, on the other hand, I do think that EVR makes some really, really good points during this chapter as well. And of course, Cordelia has this moment where she breaks and she tells Thorfinn that yes, EVR smuggled a sword aboard to Vinland. And this is the whole thing, right? Because swords are an instrument of war. They're representative of war. They're representative of combat. There are things here within Vinland that I guess you could potentially use as a weapon. There are things like axes and knives and whatnot. But they're used as tools in order to help cultivate, to farm, to create things. They're not actively used as weapons unless need be. But a sword is a tool that is specifically created and designed for killing, right? And so even having that there, even having the allure of it, is something that Thorfinn does not want. And again, I feel like this reflects back to like that first ever image of him as a child looking at the blade and sort of having this captivating thoughts of what it could mean to, to have this. What is the power behind this? This power to be able to kill somebody, to take someone's life away. But then there are these conversations that are brought up within this chapter about this men's desire to go to war, which I understand within this time period, there is that sort of underlying, you know, Valhalla, if I die in a serious combat, you know, that I will be rewarded in the afterlife. They were incentivized um, to be able to fight and to go into war, and I understand that. But there are a, a couple of things that I just, that I felt like there was more to discuss here with these points, and I don't know if I'm reading into it too much, but 
there's there's a couple of things I want to mention. My thoughts are a little bit all over the place, but let me try to go into it to the best of my ability. When we have this scene here where they decide, okay, everyone separate into groups. Everybody that thinks that we should have weapons in order to defend ourselves go into this group, and everyone that thinks we shouldn't go into the other group. The people that think that they should not have weapons in the group, the only males that are there are Thorfinn and Enar, and the rest of them are the women of the group. And then the other group are all the men of the establishment besides Thorfinn and Enar, right? So we have the separation here, and there are more men in the settlement than there are women, and the men believe that they should have weapons in order to defend themselves, and the women don't. And there's a sort of like conflict back and forth about men wanting war and things of that nature, and how like women don't even want them to go off to war, they don't know why they do it, yada yada. And so it becomes a little bit of a gender thing, right? And I know that's like a hot like button topic right now all over the internet so i try not to get get into it too much but i also have to look at like the realities of things and realities of just life in general and i think that there's a major sticking point here that nobody is talking about within the chapter itself and i don't know if i am just like reading into this the wrong way but i feel like it should be mentioned so you have this fact that all the men decide that they do want to have weapons or to defend themselves but the thing is it's being presented as that all these men actually want war deep down. Like deep down, that is something that they actually want to do and they actually want to fight. Um, one character says that it's not about that. It's about being able to defend themselves. And I think that this is a very valid point. Not that I don't think that there are uh, a bunch of men out there that are wishing for the moment where they get to prove themselves in battle or incentivize into battle. And I'm not saying that's not a thing. It definitely is, especially during this time period. But also... You got to think that if a battle were to break out, if they were to be attacked, if people came charging in at them full speed with weapons, with swords in this establishment, who would be the people that are expected to defend them? It would be the men. And that's not saying that the women wouldn't or couldn't, but like in, a, in an average fighting scenario, when shit goes down, when shit hits the fan, who are they going to look to to do something? So what I'm getting at here is that I feel like the men would feel more of a responsibility to defend the homestead, right? To, def to defend people, to in order to make sure that the women and children are safe. This is sort of just something that's like ingrained with us just uh, just biologically. We don't want people to hurt the women and children. Like men will lay their lives on the line to make sure that doesn't happen. That doesn't mean that there's also not a huge group of men that enjoy the chaos of battle itself and are just like itching for a fight and itching to uh, unleash that energy in some way. That is definitely there, but there is also this desire to protect that was that is within us and I just feel like it's a little bit disingenuous in this chapter to not even present that as uh, the main difference as to why the men would choose one side and the women would choose the other because I feel like intrinsically it comes down to men's desire to protect the women and children around them. Not saying that women don't have the ability to protect themselves, but when you're dealing with really heavy, dangerous situations, you got to be able to even the odds a little bit. In like a, mo in like a modern context, uh, right? So I've known plenty of girls in my own real life that have carried around a taser with them in their purse. Not just like a little pepper spray, but like a full-on taser, a weapon. And I think that that's a smart thing to do because there are very dangerous people out there that would want to take advantage of them and you have to have something that's going to even the odds. You know, it's like you're not necessarily going to be able to defend yourself against a man that's three times bigger than you and super strong and wants to grab a hold of you. Well, if you have a taser and you're able to whip that out and shock him quickly enough, it at least evens the odds a little bit for you to get out of there. And so I think it's a I think it's a smart thing. I also think that there is a huge point that is being missed here when it comes to Thorfinn. And again, I love Vinland Saga. This is my one of my favorite mangas of all time, but I just have to just... I have to just review this with what I'm looking at like logically that's not being brought up and that is it goes back to the classic quote of it is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war and basically what that quote means is it is it is better to live a life of peace but if you only live a life, life of peace and you don't know how to defend yourself you don't know how to stick up for yourself or you don't know how to fight if you need to fight then you will probably most likely just only be a victim. 
The thing about Thorfinn is that he has this background experience of going through all of these things, and this is why he values peace, and this is why he values a world without war, and it makes total sense for his character. But with Gudri kind of talking up Thorfinn about like, look, Thorfinn doesn't want to do this. Thorfinn doesn't want war. Well, of course he doesn't. But the thing is that you have to remember is that Thorfinn is already an experienced and strong warrior within himself, not just uh, with being able to, you know, create this world that he's created, but because when push comes to shove, he is, he has the, the skill set and the knowledge to be able to defend himself. You know, if Thorfinn were not as skilled as he was, would he have been able to get Gudrid out of the compound that she was stuck in during the Baltic Sea arc? Would he have been able to make it through that entire uh, scenario? And he spent a, a lot of time, you know, trying to get out of those situations without fighting which i respect and i do think that you should use the first option if that first option is viable absolutely which is what thorfinn has been doing which is why i respect his character but you also can't deny the fact that thorfinn is not helpless if a horrible thing were to happen or if somebody was going to try to attack him you know he wouldn't go out seeking violence but he would be responsible for defending those uh, against violence, right? So I guess the, the point I'm getting at is I feel like there's a, there's a point in this discussion that is not being brought up, and that is sort of that um, innate responsibility that you would have to defend yourself and others. And, and that's why you sort of even the odds with weapons. Um, but that also leads into how far does that go? You know, and now we have, again, like in our modern, modern society, we have multiple countries with like nuclear weapons and shit, right? Because everyone has to have the strongest weapon as an incentive for other people not to harm them. Um, and can you get away with just talking through it? Well, I think you should try to talk through it, absolutely. But I think what Gudrid is saying in this chapter is like a huge oversimplification of that like responsibility that you would feel in order to protect yourself and those around you. I don't think it's just paranoia, and I don't think it's just I, I'm a scared man, and so like I need something to defend myself. I think it's like logical to have something to even the odds. The same way, you know, I I've known people that carry around tasers, like. But I also remember back to the earlier chapters during the prologue arc, and remember when Askeladd went into that village um, in the winter time, and he just rounded everybody out up, and the entire mercenary band just slaughtered them, right? And those people. They didn't have any means to defend themselves. And if they did, they all just gave up and submitted. And they did try to talk to Askeladd's group. And they did try to talk themselves out of it. And they didn't have a Thorfinn in their group, perhaps. And maybe Thorfinn would have been able to talk that situation out better. But imagine if that happened here, you know? Um, and how would they respond from that? Would they just allow themselves to die? I don't think Thorfinn would just allow them to die, you know? I think Thorfinn would do something about it, but it's a really difficult situation. And I, I'm not trying to say that I don't agree with Thorfinn's views of what he's trying to accomplish, because I do, and I think it's very respectable. Uh, but I also think there's just particular things here that are, are missing that should probably be discussed, and I don't know if they'll have a chance to. In the next chapter, uh, it looks like the native tribe is kind of coming over, along with the old man who has been the one that has basically been saying, like, we got to get these people out of here, and, you know, with that went through the vision quest and everything. So, uh, if you have that, so they might bring on a conversation starting with a little bit of antagonism, which might uh, make Eviar think that it confirms the things that he's been saying, and who knows where it could go from there. But otherwise, I gotta say it was a great chapter because it really did get the dialogue going well, and I think all the points were made very, very well back and forth. I just think that there are some things missing that they sh probably should have talked about, and uh, you know, the more that it goes on and the more that I think about it, the and it, I get conflicted. I get conflicted because I kind of agree with both of them. I, I understand both points that are coming across here and I just don't really know what the middle ground 
is and i don't even know if there can be a middle ground because humanity has existed for how many thousands of years and we still deal with the same problems just on a higher level of destruction so i don't think there really is a right answer i think it would be great if we didn't need to have weapons and we could just talk to each other and settle our differences but i mean there's no guarantee that that's how everybody's mindset will be and that's the main that's i think like the main piece of the puzzle that you know is is the hard thing to get across is that yes this is a great well structured well thought out way to go about things but there are horrible people in the world that do horrible things for a myriad of reasons and you can't convince them all and so that is why it is better to be a warrior in a garden a warrior that doesn't need to fight that doesn't want to fight but is capable of fighting as opposed to a gardener in a war who is not capable of fighting and will immediately be destroyed but anyways i have ranted long enough so let me know what you guys think about this chapter down below what do you think about the conflict that is happening right now what side do you stand on what points do you agree with it is honestly a great discussion and do you think they missed any points that should have been brought up like i did or if there's more things that they could have more nuance to the conversation that they could have talked about so let me know that in the comments below as well other than that, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. It'll help me out in the algorithm as far as any comments go as well. And if you guys want to subscribe to the channel, I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So I'd really, really appreciate your support if you wanted to. Other than that, guys, I do hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll talk to you next time.